Ted Greenfield, over 50 and learning to fly, and what three things do you need to plan around when you start to fly long cross-country trips? Thanks for joining me and welcome, welcome, welcome. If this channel is helping you and if you are finding benefit or if you are enjoying it, please subscribe to the channel. Click the subscribe button, click the notification button, wherever it is. And it really helps the channel and it helps me and it also helps me to know that it's helping you, which is why I'm doing this because I wanna encourage all of us over 50s to get out there and get flying. You never want to bite off more than you can chew in your first cross country. So don't feel bad about building up to where you need to go. I mean, you need to take your time. Remember, you are new at this. I fly a lot between Washington DC and Tampa St. Pete, Florida. And when I first started making the trip, I started into a three day affair and I found myself planning around these three things, weather, Fatigue, fuel, weather, weather, weather. I can't say enough about this. Your knowledge of weather will be your best friend and in light GA aircraft, all your planning should be around the weather. We fly light aircraft and they are no match for any type of weather. Bad weather can paint you into a corner very, very quickly and it could be a corner that you can't get out of. I was headed down to the Tampa area and it was your typical hot, humid afternoon. Now, just looking out the window, the weather was slowly building, but it was also consistently building. And looking at the radar picture in foreflight, this is what I was going to be flying into. So at the time, I was directly over St. Simons Island, Georgia, and I took a good long look at this picture, maybe about 10 seconds, and I thought through the logical progression of events. Number one, this was not going to get better. Number two, I was really enjoying my flight and I wanted to keep it that way. And number three, St. Simons Island has a great little Hilton Hotel attached to the airport with a pool. So number four, they will give you a crew car at the airport. Now all that versus running the gauntlet of unpredictable Florida afternoon thunderstorms and just looking at the radar movement told me more thunderstorms would be popping up as the temperatures would be increasing. And the biggest factor, putting myself in the scenario would suck and it would be stupid. So as I was right next to St. Simons Island, I canceled my IFR and I landed for the day and I enjoyed a wonderful steak and a nice hotel room. Now, right as I landed, I realized something that would have been a real problem if I were to continue and flight conditions were to continue to deteriorate. I was tired and I did not realize it. As soon as I landed, I had that tired feeling come over me like a wave, which brings me to the next point, fatigue. Fatigue sneaks up on you and you feel like you're fine until you're exhausted and then it happens in a second. You don't want to fly when you're tired. When you are tired, you make bad decisions and you take shortcuts and it's usually the first step in something bad happening. When I landed, I realized it. I didn't sleep well the night before, and I had only been flying for three hours, but I had been flying for three hours, being very focused on the weather ahead, talking to ATC, being re-vectored a time or two, and doing my fuel calculations. I was also doing all this at 9,000 feet. That is a lot of mental work. And yes, I was understandably tired. The minute the excitement of flying ended and I opened the door, I realized I was in need of a nap. Probably the biggest mental effort I was exerting during the last hour of this leg was doing my fuel calculations, which brings me to our final point, fuel. As a personal minimum, I never land with less than an hour of fuel on board. That will give me a VFR day reserve, plus leave some margin as well. Remember, weather can paint you into a corner quickly and you will need gas to get out of it. So, 
I hope this was helpful. I hope this will help you set your personal minimums. And also I hope that you will start doing long cross countries and plan them effectively and plan them properly. So subscribe to the channel. If you're over 50 and you wanna fly, get out there and take flying lessons. And if you are over 50, get out and get in the air. Thanks for watching.